Hi, this is The Advisor with Stacey Chalami. Today, I'm very excited because we have a very special guest with us today. But before we begin, I just want to give a quick shout out to our sponsor. It's dmaworld.com. And Mark, who runs the company, wanted us to let you know that he cares about small businesses and he likes to see small businesses grow. He doesn't want to see you get scammed by those big marketing companies. So check out Mark's company, dmaworld.com, where you can find out solutions to the problems that you're having to help your company grow into the business that you desire. So Mark, tell me a little about yourself and what you do. You are a relationship coach, and I just want to hear more about it. I'm very excited to have you on the show. Yeah, sure. Um, so like you mentioned, Stacy, I am a relationship coach, but there's there's a bit of a mixed bag there. Like, So I, I both run my company, High Thrive Coaching, and uh, I work directly with the clients. I do some amount of um, assessment ahead of time, but there's a lot of different things that, that we do. But my company, High Thrive Coaching, the main thing that we try to accomplish is we try to give people um, a way forward in relationship crises. Mm -hmm. So essentially, we take a lot of people who say, hey, my husband, my wife, they're talking about divorce, they're halfway out the door. And for a whole lot of people, they see that as a hopeless situation because they're hitting all these walls. Their, their spouse is saying, I'm done. I don't want to talk. And we found that, you know, with some guidance, we can get past a lot of those obstacles and we can get the relationship back to this state where um, the other person is actually wanting to talk and maybe considering working things out. And that's that's entirely what we do day in and day out is talk about these really difficult crisis situations. Now, when it comes to relationships, do you deal with all different age groups or do you find that a lot of these problems seem to happen more in the, the middle age to um, 40 and older or 50 and older? Well, I think that there's several different stages in life and relationships. I think each stage has its own challenge. Yes. Uh, so we do see some younger couples. We do see some older couples. But, and the challenges are a little bit different in those cases. Right. I, I think a, a lot with the younger couples, they um, they get past this like honeymoon phase where everything is seeming really great. And they're actually having to settle down into real life. Yes. They start having kids. They might start having to focus on the career. And so these extra stressors are introduced. And yes. there tends to be a dip right there. So we see a lot of people in that category. We also see a lot of people um, towards the, uh, you know, a little bit further on when kids have grown up and they're starting to move out of the house. Yes. And here's a like here's that like classic midlife crisis sort of situation where people yeah. are reevaluating their life and they're like, do I actually like this anymore? Do I want something different? I only have a little bit of time here to actually settle into something new. And so we see some crises at that point. So we see a, a, a large range of situations. Right. And you know what? What are some of the things that you know um, that help relationships so they stay healthy? Can you tell us a little about different techniques that uh, people can use to keep the relationship healthy? Because as time goes on, we tend to change as individuals too. We find out who we are, and they say people change every seven years. And you know, and it's so true. As you get older, you start to find out a little bit more about yourself, and you start to dive deeper into who you are as a person. And sometimes the the partner, you know, remembers that person they first met and they're like, who is this person? You know, this person is not the person I met in my twenties and life changes. So what are some things you could tell us about as, as relationships evolve, how to keep a relationship healthy and strong? Well, that's a really good question. You know, on the one hand, so much of what I do is help people out of a hole, but I mean, your question, like, how do we avoid going in the hole in the first place? Yeah, is excellent. Um, I do see that a lot of the couples that I'm looking at, um, and we can kind of reverse engineer this, like how they got in the hole in the first place is, uh, as you mentioned, couples start to evolve, and they change. And a lot of times there are these silent or hidden bids for something within the relationship. Right. Right. So maybe here is the the wife who is quietly saying, hey, can you hear me out a little bit more? Or I want to consider this a little bit more. And for one reason or another, it's perceived as being ignored or rejected. Yeah. And uh, 
the problem arises as a lot of these bids continue to get shut down. And what I tend to see is usually the, the, the shutting down is not on purpose. Right. So what tends to happen is since all these things are getting shut down, we start building up this idea that this thing that I'm looking for, this thing that I absolutely need in my life, it's impossible to attain within the relationship. Right. So it's easier for me to step aside and step out of the relationship. Now that's, that's the problem. So if we reverse engineer this, Mm -hmm. say, Hey, there absolutely needs to be some room in the relationship to once be able to speak clearly and communicate clearly about what what's wanted yeah and have some room to negotiate that within a relationship if i if i were to say what is the number one thing that needs to be protected it's that so yeah. like you know i've been married to my wife now for 18 years we have five kids and um <laughs> we we really make sure that we protect that sort of time where we can talk to each other and listen on a deep level but it it wasn't always that way we had right to, we had to build we had to figure that out um, right. some years ago and I think that if a couple does really well with being able to recognize some of those bids even when they're not being communicated well mm-hmm. or if they're able to speak up about themselves and what they need and that's being able to in their the other partner is able to receive that well that's a good situation that can adapt to many of these changes that happen over the years I feel like communication is key and so is honesty, but I feel sometimes when we approach somebody and we're honest with somebody in relationships, I, what I see it sometimes is that some people have a hard time accepting hearing the truth, you know, and, and that could be, you know, pose a problem in a relationship when you're in a relationship and you, you, you know, approach your, your spouse or your partner and you you tell them how you feel and you give them your honest, you know, um, verbal emo- you know, emotions. I'm feeling this way because, and that person's having a hard time accepting it because they don't want to hear the truth because the truth hurts. How do you actually, um, you know, be able to solve that problem where you could actually have a healthy communication and be truthful with one another. Cause some people are afraid to tell somebody the truth mm-hmm. because they are afraid, you know, what the reaction is going to be because they know that person so well, they know they're not going to be able to handle the truth. Well. Yeah, no, that's a, an excellent question. I actually was just answering this to a client a couple hours ago. <laughs> so I want a quick story with that. So I was talking with this gentleman, he's a little bit older and he's made some mistakes with his life. And, you know, not only was he trying to repair his relationship with his wife, but also his kids, but he sent out this really great message to his wife, trying to get some things going. And she responded with a lot of hurt. And he came back and he said, do you see this? Do you see what she's saying about me? Do you see what she, like, how could she say these things about me? And I said, hold up a moment right there. You invited her to give you some feedback and you're coming to me and you're saying, how dare she? Right. I, and it's exactly that kind of situation that you were describing there. Like, how can we be open here in these situations? And I I was able to help him see that these sort of reactions were at the heart of the problems in his relationship. His wife didn't feel able to come and talk to him because he was shutting her down. Yeah, it's defensiveness. I like the um, I like, I borrow theories from. I, I like to ground my work in a lot in mm-hmm. established theories. So in this case, I'm thinking of like Dr. John Gottman, big name in marriage research, huge name, great author, um, very smart guy. Right. So he talks about four horsemen of divorce, and uh, these are like predictors that say, hey, if these things are present, divorce is likely. Yeah. But I I also want to recognize that these are things that tend to shut down discussion right these things are like criticism contempt defensiveness and stonewalling yes um in the, in this case this gentleman that i was talking to he's getting defensive when he was hearing feedback and what we're really looking for is if we're trying to open this up there has to be some ability to to receive things well um yes. the and i think the metaphor the that I like to use is like the idea of this safe harbor. So here's all this, all this emotional turmoil, but you need to have this space here where even though there's all this turmoil, things can be a little bit calm and we can receive those, those ships or the the bids or whatever we happen to say. And 
otherwise it's just not going to go anywhere positive and I, I've gone off my tangent here, Stacy, and I've, I'm forgetting the initial question, but we were talking about like, how do we get into, or how do we have healthier communication? Was that what it was? Or- yeah, you know, but you were kind of flowing in the right direction. Yeah, with, no. You know, we were, we were talking about like, you know, how do you know, how do, how do you work with that somebody who doesn't take constructive criticism or honesty well? Yes. And, um, you know, like you said, it's a, it's a, it's a, you have to work as a team basically and, and be able to be open to that, you know, constructive criticism. Like you said, when you use the example of this couple, you know, he invited the, you know, he invited her to express her emotions and tell how she felt, but then he didn't like what he heard. So then he got defensive. Yeah. And so like when we're saying, how do we actually work with something like that? Um, it's really, it's a lot easier when I have that direct access with my clients. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I'm able to coach them through that and say, Hey, look, if you're trying to get in and get good with your husband or wife better, you need to be able to do this. It's a little bit different, you know, when I'm saying, Hey, client, go to your spouse and have them receive you well. Yeah. That's that's a different case entirely. And, you know, a lot of like what we do when I'm working with clients in those cases is we have to build to that. Right. And oftentimes with the other partner feeling so hurt, we can't always demand a lot from them. Like, please listen to me. Please hear me. They're they're just not ready for that. Yeah. And a lot of the, the early work is helping my client help their spouse feel heard yeah oftentimes i see like once um once we can get that going a little bit more and once they are feeling safe from the client that i'm working with it becomes a lot easier to have the spouse receive my client a little bit better and feel uh, be able to receive some of that feedback a bit better but it's we have to build to it so how do you how do you you know when you talk about how do you get in your client to feel like they're being heard? What are some constructive ways to to make your partner feel like they're being heard? Hmm. Um, I, I'm pausing for a moment here because I'm trying to think of like where in the process are we? Um, I, right. One of the things that I I will start a lot of clients off with in terms of like making sure that your partner feels heard and, and received. I, I, I give people a really structured approach. Okay. And this is what I, I call it a cave approach. We, we're going to have a little bit of an acronym here. Mm-hmm. So I tell them, hey, you, you start off approaching them with a lot of curiosity. Notice, notice some feelings that have been going on. Be curious, ask some questions. Like, hey, I notice you've been seeming a bit upset. I'm really curious about that. I want to understand what's going on. Yeah. I, I tell I tell clients almost ninety some percent of the time that person is going to respond and is probably going to double down on some of those feelings. Yeah, say, great. Wait for a response. So we have the A and the V. We need to have some acceptance and validation. You need to be able to receive some of that, even if it's not what you want to hear, even if it's a little bit negative, and you have to validate it. And right. I have to spell this out for clients because some clients are like, I have no idea what you're talking about. (laughs) So like when I'm telling them, hey, acceptance and validation, you need to like verbally say, essentially, like you need to convey that their point of view makes sense to you. Right. It it makes sense in general. Not that we have to agree or that you just have to throw yourself under the rug or the bus, but it has to make sense. Right. Generally speaking, you know, you you make a statement of validation. They're going to continue to double down on their point. And then that that last one E is you need to express some empathy, like touch on the emotional side of things, right? And really speak to that that side. So like, hey, you're feeling, I see you're feeling really upset. Um, I'm curious about that. Hey, your point of view makes sense. That must feel really painful and frustrating. I get where you're coming from. Yeah. Then we can kind of move on and maybe make some bids for some some amount of solution of some sort, but. Those four things right there really open up the the conversation to being able to move it in a healthier place because then that other partner feels heard and received first. Right. Now, a lot of times, like I see, especially now after COVID, you know, a lot of people are suffering from finances. They're financially struggling. 
and, you know, finance, you know, problems can really hurt a relationship. It could put a lot of stress on the relationship. It could cause a lot of unnecessary fighting. And how, how do you, you, how does a couple not let their finances overbear their healthy relationship where it gets to a point where they can, you know, the person is so under so much stress that they're taking out their, their frustration or their anger on their partner because they're so worried about, you know, making ends meet or being the the breadwinner or trying to pay the bills and vice versa. How do you, you know, deal with that problem in a relationship? No, that's, that's really, that's a good question. It's really relevant. I think it's, we, we, a lot of people tend to say, okay, here is finances or here is, you know, I'm another hot button topic. It would be sex. Yes. Uh, we say, okay, these are separate things. And really the way I'm looking at it is like, this just happens to be certain things that are being prioritized. Yes. Like with finances, the priority tends to be if like, if I'm focusing on finances, I'm tending to look at how do I gain some sense of security or stability in my life? Mm -hmm. I want to feel like there's some calm here. Mm -hmm. If it's another hot button topic like sex, I'm wanting to feel like I matter, that I'm wanted, that I feel some ability to have some connection right and we might have some counter to um stability <laughs> within finances they might say i want to feel some freedom in my life i right. want to feel some ability to um be able to enjoy the things in life and these are all just none of them is really bad yeah it's you know the the partner who wants to be able to spend to kind of distract themselves a little bit it's not it's not such a terrible want like of course we want to be able to enjoy some things out of life yeah and it's just like how are we negotiating some of these balance are these priorities Mm -hmm. and that's that's where this conflict comes from it's and if i'm working with a couple if i'm working with both partners this is an easy thing to to discuss i um i generally am trying to approach it and saying hey look can you see that this is this is these are just preferences? These are opinions, and neither one of these is bad. A bad yeah. thing. We try to get some, some accept, um, some understanding or acceptance there, and then, you know, there's a very simple way that I go about um, helping the couple negotiate some expectations around these priorities in a way that works for both of them. Right. I, when I'm just working with an individual trying to settle things down, it really there's a wide range of like depending on where they're at in the situation, if the partner is actually going to work with them, if they're going to listen, that's a, that's a great situation. If they're not going to listen, then, you know, it tends to be more about setting boundaries and making sure that there's, you know, even as you're setting boundaries that you give some room for the other person and what they want. But there, I guess what I'm getting at here is it really depends on the situation and where they're at. But in general, I think the the general principle is like we want to look at these things as prioritizing different good things. Right. The if you're a healthy couple, you learn to negotiate these good things. Together. Right. Right. No, that's a great answer. And I think people, you know, they, they tend to forget to prioritize and, or they, they lose, they get so involved in what's happening in, in their life and, and the problems they're going through that they're just so engulfed in it that they don't see anything but that problem. Well, I think what happens is they say, well, this is the priority. This is the right thing. If yeah. you're disagreeing with me, then that's the wrong thing. And that's that's the wrong way to look at it when you're in a relationship. Yeah. Um, like my uh, myself um, and my wife, my wife is a very energetic person. She She's wonderful. I love that energy. And I provide a lot of grounding in, in yeah. relationship. And we have some different priorities sometimes in like what we are trying to accomplish. Right. And why it works for both of us is we are able to communicate some of those needs and we have some give and take and we have some a, a great ability to negotiate those needs once again we weren't always like this yeah we had to build this up we we very nearly uh broke up at one point but uh mm -hmm. this like that ability to openly discuss it and negotiate is is key 
Oh, definitely. Definitely. I think the being able to discuss it and negotiate it is definitely key. And, and that's something people have to be willing to do. Both people have to be willing to do. Certainly. Now, I notice also like in relationships, you know, as time goes on and you're married for a long period of time, um, things start to change. You know, when you start to get into those 15 years, 20 years, 25 years, and sometimes the spark can die down or, you know, you know, you also go through your bodily changes where your libido might, you know, decrease or a lot of men, you know, experience erectile dysfunction and, you know, they just have go through, you know, their testosterone levels go down both in men and women and in their, their experience, things they'd never experienced before. And how do you uh, work with somebody and work with a couple and, you know, encourage them, you know, in different ways to keep that spark going? Because so many people that I come across, you know, the problem that they feel is that the spark had died and, yeah. and they don't feel that that spark that they used to feel anymore. They still love the person, but they just it's a different type of love that it turned into. And they're kind of missing that spark, but they don't know how to get it back. Mm -hmm. Well, I want to I want to separate this into two different things because we're we're hearing spark and we're also hearing basically libido and, and sexual desire, which I'm looking at this as like he, here is this emotional connection and desire and then here's this this physical thing and I do think certainly I want to acknowledge that there is a physical side to this as people age hormones change there's menopause and there's just a, uh, different problems with aging right I'll get to that in a second but most people when they're talking about the spark mm -hmm. they're saying do i feel like the, these butterflies do i feel this excitement around my partner yeah my i i will defend this point to the day i die that i i think that it's not necessarily an inevitable that that dies off mm -hmm. the the reason why it dies off over time is because you know other things get put in the way um right. i've like i mentioned i have five kids it's really easy for me to um hear the squeaky wheels of my kids and or they're complaining <laughs> and to focus over there yeah um my wife and i have had to draw some boundaries around our time together in order to protect that and not to like say hey look at me i have such a great relationship but i, I do yeah <laughs> Because, you know, because we do protect our, our relationship um, from other good things in our life, mm -hmm. uh, we still have a regular time for dates uh, on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. uh, I still look forward to my time with my wife in the evening. Um, I still have those feelings after, now so we've been married for 18 years. We dated for four years before that. I've been with her more than half my lifetime and yeah. mm -hmm. so I have those feelings but it's because we do so well with protecting that time um, yeah and I mean there's a lot of other factors that are involved with that but I I'm of the opinion that if you take the effort to to really put in effort mm -hmm. that's what maintains that that spark in a relationship Right. The only reason that it dies off is because we say kids get in the way or my my career is being prioritized or I need to take some time to prioritize friendships. Yeah. We aren't focusing in on the relationship. The if we want to take this the other side of this. Um now I, we I, I'm, I'm gonna I'm I think I'm oversimplifying the spark thing. There's there's so much more to look at there, but yeah. for time's sake, we'll move on. The, if we're looking at the physical side of this, uh, I think that's a scary thing to be aging and recognize that, hey, some of my physical desire is leaving. Um, in couples, when I'm approaching this, I always look at that emotional side first. Is that being supported? Because yeah. generally speaking, if that emotional side, if that connection is really there, people can make that physical side work uh, to some degree. If there's right. actually some very specific physical problems like hey there's erectile dysfunction hey there is a problem with hormones i mean that's a solvable problem if you right. have that emotional connection then 
that you know all you do is you, you, you get the medication you you check your hormones you yes. get the doctor and that that can come back quite easily right in my opinion oh for sure definitely definitely I think those are great, great, great uh, answers. And, you know, I think it's very important that people hear these things. So these are common things that go on in people's relationships. Now, I know that you were talking about that you will have some programs and you offer some services. I'd like to hear more about them, if you don't mind. Yeah. So we, um, as I mentioned earlier, like where we have put our focus on is a lot in those crisis situations where people are giving up a bit of hope. They're saying there's nothing to be done with the marriage, but someone wants to hold on to it. Now, right. I, I say marriage, I'm really just meaning relationships in general. I have a lot of people that come my way that might not be technically married, and but they may have been with this person for many years and just really any long-term relationship. Uh, so what we do is we we take these individuals, we say, hey, I know things are looking hopeless, but look, here are so many options to, you know, increase the amount of comfort in the relationship, help them pull away from this law, uh, lack of hope, to help them see that there are solutions within the relationship. Right. And I know a lot of my clients want to come in and they say, okay, we're two weeks in, why isn't my <laughs> wife wanting to work things out with me. And I, I have to, that's a lot of my work is saying, Hey, this takes a little bit of time. If your husband or your wife was considering divorce, this has been years in the making. And I'm, you know, so I'm helping them find those solutions. I'm helping them keep that hope that things can work out. Right. And I see all the time, like all the time where, you know, there's a divorce set and they don't want to talk uh, they, their spouse doesn't want to talk to them and they're saying only communicate to me about the kids or something. And we turn that around into a situation where they're now coming back together. I just, last week I was talking with a couple and when she first came to me, they had been separated for about a year and a half. Uh, he'd hardly wanted to see her. He wouldn't hardly talk to her. Now, I'm meeting with both of them together as a couple and they're talking about, um, you know, negotiating, buying a house together and moving back in together. So like there is a lot of hope in a lot of these situations that we right. might recognize. So what I do is I, I work one-on-one -on -one with uh, my clients. I help them know what to say and how to bridge those, that gap between where they are and where they want to be. Uh, we, I do a lot of support over social media and email. So I like my clients can check in with me all throughout the week if they just had a big fight they don't know how to respond to their spouse i'm there um yeah. beyond that we also have group calls where people can check in they can say hey what's going on can i get a little bit of support i can see that other people in the are in a similar boat as me i can see that some of these solutions are working for them maybe i'll try that out but it's a really comprehensive approach right a really <laughs> involved approach because that's what's needed in these crisis situations yeah and so rather than taking a therapy approach and saying, hey, you know, you're this is this is bad. What do, what do you want to do with this? You know, some not not that not that therapy is a terrible thing, but these mm -hmm. situations, it needs a lot more guidance and needs yeah. a lot more structure and needs a lot more clear direction. And that's what right. I have. Oh, that's excellent. That's excellent. Now, where can people find your website when they can find you? Sure, sure. Um, they can go to highthrivecoaching.com. Um, mm -hmm. If they'd like to just get a, an evaluation and see if like this is a good fit, if like there is any hope in their situation, same way website, highthrivecoaching.com slash apply. So that's high as in like H, like a high, high five, but yeah, yeah. you know, I thrive. Uh, if people would like to um, just in general, they're like, who's this Mark guy? Does he even mm -hmm. know talking about? Um, I don't know. I take some time every week to just kind of answer questions and talk about this topic in general. I've been doing that this now for close to four years. We are 170 some episodes into our podcast. You can check us out on YouTube at the, I want to say thriving. This, I'm, this is, this is terrible. Um, no, it's okay. They could probably find your YouTube channel on your Yeah, website. no, like I'm just saying I don't yeah, it's High Thrive Coaching is is the channel. But I, I do that all the time. It's terrible. Are you no. honest with me. Oops. Is your marriage 
I had to type it in. That was what that was. I, I'm just saying it was terrible because I don't normally run my, the social media, like I don't, or the marketing. So it's like, I, I do it all the time. Oh God, even... What is my own channel here? <laughs> even though I'm, I'm there like every single week for like years, I'm like, oh man. No worries. I do that all the time. Same thing. Same no, thing. That's fine. Uh, so yeah, High Thrive Coaching on YouTube. You can also check us out at The Thriving Marriage on Facebook. I'm We're all over the place. Um, so I like to be out there. I, I don't want to just assume that people are going to be like, yeah, I'm going to go with this guy. Please check us out. Please ask questions. Please be a little bit skeptical. Yeah. Don't mind it at all. Like I, I have people showing up for these evaluation calls and they're like, I'm not sure if this is for me. And I'm like, fine, I can, I don't, I don't mind taking a little bit of time to talk with these people to right. see if it is, if it's a good fit. No, that's great. That's great. And do you have like a blog on your website or do you have anything um, people could refer to any type of articles or anything like that? No, not a whole lot of articles. Um, we focused a little bit more on like, yeah, like I said, the, the podcast. And okay. What, but, but there's right there. That's usually me um, for about an hour at a time each week. Oh, that's great. Uh, we also run some master classes, um, meaning like if people just want to kind of a good overview of everything. Yeah. Uh, we we usually announce those on the Facebook group as well. So Oh, that's excellent. That's yeah. excellent. Uh, you, you know, this has been wonderful. Now, if you had to give some tips to couples, how would, you know, what are some important tips, you know, to keep in a healthy and happy marriage? What would you tell people, you know, if, if you had some simple tips that they could practice at home to keep that relationship healthy and to keep it thriving? We're talking about like some maintenance or trying to get to some improved state. Uh, I think a lot of it depends on where people are at. But in general, if you are in an okay situation and your spouse will talk to you and generally is going to work with you a little bit, I think if you're trying to get out of a little bit of a hole, um, it's more than anything, I think you need to dedicate some time to it. Right. Uh, as in my suggestion would be to have some time set aside each week. You're not going to have some distractions. Uh, I would call this like a, a couple's inventory. It's mm -hmm. a space where people can, either one of you can bring up some concerns, feel heard, and the two of you can negotiate on what those solutions would be. Right. I think it's a really great place to start. Yes. I. Uh, and at the same time, like if you feel like your relationship is heading in the wrong direction, I wouldn't rely just on on that. Yeah, um, I would highly, highly recommend that you you find people who specialize in relationships. Like certainly, sure, come to me. Wouldn't mind that at all. But okay. some, uh, I, I spend enough time doing you know like in a general practice and therapy to know that like a lot of the, if you just go to a general pra therapy practice, right. That's not generally their specialty. It wasn't my specialty for a while. Yeah. And so like a lot of times in those clinics, people are, the therapists are seeing like anxiety disorders, mood disorders, eating disorders, and that's like their bread and butter. Yeah. And I, w I personally wouldn't go to someone who doesn't specialize yes. in a particular problem that you're looking for. So if you're going to do it on your own, yeah, structure some time, but I would highly recommend finding someone who can knows how to evaluate the situation and can steer you in the right direction. Excellent. Excellent. I, I think this is great advice. You know, this has been wonderful, Mark. I I, I love, you know, the, the topics that we had touched base on. And is there anything else that any any other topic that you'd like to touch base on before we go that you think needs to be addressed? Or did we hit some most important topics? Yeah, one last thought is make sure people that you're not waiting too long. There's so many people who say that kind of take their relationship for granted. They say, well, my my husband, my wife, they're going to be there for me. Yeah. And there's so many people that I hear that express this regret that said, hey, if only I'd talked to you two years ago. Right. Or even a year ago, you know, some some amount of time to go. I, I only wish I had paid attention to this sooner. So I, I please don't be that person. Right. Please, you know, if if it's just a little, even if it feels like a little small thing, please bring it up. Please address it. Please do something with your spouse now rather than sit on it and regret it later. 
Excellent. Yes. Because, you know, sometimes when you prolong things, you, you know, sometimes you could be in denial. Sometimes you could just not want to address the problem because you know it's going to be painful. But whatever the case may be, when it lingers, it only gets worse in any situation, it seems. Exactly. It seems more and more impossible if you just keep sitting on it. It, it doesn't feel like it's ever going to change in those cases. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. This has been wonderful, Mark. Thank you so much for coming on the show. I'd love to have you back on the show. Maybe we can address some other topics in the future. We'd this love to do that, yeah. Yeah, this has been wonderful. Thank you so much. It's my pleasure. You have a great day. You too.